Thanks to the new Netflix documentary, What Jennifer Did, Jennifer Pan's horrendous 2010 crime is back in the spotlight. Why are her and her co-conspirators getting a new trial? On the night of November 8, 2010, police in Markham, a quiet Toronto suburb, received a frantic call from 24-year-old Jennifer Pan. Three men had allegedly broken into her home, tied her up, and shot both of her parents, Han and Bick. Her mother died on the scene, while Han, who was shot through the eye, miraculously managed to survive. He was subsequently put in a medically induced coma. At the police station, Jennifer tearfully related her version of the events to the investigators. And then I heard two pops. My mom screamed. Based on her story, it seemed to be a random home invasion that had taken a turn for the worst. However, when her father awoke from his coma and related his version of the events, police came to find that the truth was much more complicated and nefarious. It all points back to the difficult relationship Jennifer had with her parents. An unnamed friend recalled to Toronto Life that they had always been, quote, absolutely controlling of her. From a young age, she was expected to perform at a high level in school, while also taking piano lessons and skating lessons. She always brought home stellar report cards, so all was seemingly well. However, the truth was that Jennifer was struggling academically and had been faking her report cards. She failed to graduate high school and then lied about attending college. The deceit went on for years, with her parents thinking that she was taking classes and living with a friend part-time. Instead, she was actually waiting tables and staying with her secret boyfriend, Daniel Wong, and his family. Eventually, her parents found out what was really going on, and their response was harsh. Although Jennifer was in her 20s, Han took away her phone and computer and forbade her from seeing Wong. As he later testified in court, I told her to cease the relationship with Danny Wong or wait until I'm dead. But she secretly continued seeing Wong and decided that she wasn't going to abide by her father's wish and wait for him to die. Instead, police alleged that Jennifer and Danny came up with a plan to kill her parents so she could inherit around $500,000 and they could be together. The couple asked a friend of Wong's, Lenford Crawford, to set up the contract killings. On the night of November 8, 2010, David Milvaganem, Eric Carty, and Leonard Crawford entered the Pan's home after Jennifer unlocked the front door. According to Han's statement to the police and his later testimony, he was held at gunpoint in the living room alongside his wife and pistol whipped. Then he saw Jennifer walk downstairs with one of the suspects. She was not tied up, as she had claimed in her 911 call and subsequent interviews. Lie, lie, lie. In fact, as Han alleged, they were speaking softly with each other and engaging in what seemed to be a friendly conversation. Soon after, Han and Bick were dragged into the basement and shot. Pan, Wong, Milvaganem, and Crawford went to trial in Newmarket, Ontario in 2014, a case that lasted 10 months and became one of the longest trials in Canadian history. From the stand, Jennifer alleged that she had actually hired the hitmen to kill her because she was depressed but unable to take her own life. She then claimed that she had called the whole thing off after her relationship with her father improved, and that the hitmen had shown up on their own volition even though she told them that they were no longer needed. Her lawyer, Paul Cooper, told the court, the events of that night were never supposed to happen. However, the prosecutors didn't buy her suicide by hitmen defense, and neither did the jury. After four days of deliberation, all of the defendants were convicted of first-degree murder in the killing of Bick Pan, and attempted murder in the shooting of Han Pan. A judge later sentenced Jennifer and the three others to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. At first, she had no reaction, but as the news sunk in, she broke down and started to sob. Eric Carty took a plea deal for conspiracy to murder and received an 18-year sentence. He later died in prison, but that's not the end of the story. In May 2023, Ontario's Court of Appeal overturned Jennifer Pan's first-degree murder conviction, along with those of Wong, Milvaganem, and Crawford. The appeal centered around an error by the presiding judge when he was instructing the jury on the relevant laws before they began deliberating. 
Then, the prosecution filed its own appeal to forestall a new trial in the case, which is allowed in Canadian law. As of this video, the Supreme Court of Canada has not decided on whether to hear the appeal. Meanwhile, Jennifer and her co-defendants remain in prison for their attempted murder convictions. If you or someone you know is struggling or in crisis, help is available. Call or text 988 or chat 988lifeline.org.